This video is sponsored by Squarespace. When you think of classic video game characters that have withstood the test of time, there's one Italian plumber that's likely to make everyone shortlist. It's me, Mario! The Mario franchise contains more than 200 games and has sold over 776 million copies of those games, making it the best-selling video game franchise of all time. Just the thought of covering all that content, not to mention the cartoons, comics, spin-offs, and merchandise is exhausting. Thankfully, there's a sub-series of Mario that's only the fifth best-selling series of all time, with sales of over 390 million copies. So, Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. This is the evolution of Super Mario. Nintendo's Poster Boy debuted as the player character in the arcade game Donkey Kong back in 1981. He originally went by Jumpman or Mr. Video and his design was based on the popular cartoon character Popeye. In fact, Mr. Video's creator, Shigeru Miyamoto, intended for Popeye to take the lead role, but he was unable to obtain the licensing rights. So Miyamoto swapped the sailor for a plumber, fully prepared for the backup character to be unpopular and to only be used for cameo roles in the future. How wrong he was. Jumpman started to gain more of a personality when Donkey Kong was shipped to the United States. It just so happened that the angry landlord of a Seattle warehouse where the games were being held went by the name of Mario. After he got into an argument with the then president of Nintendo, Minoru Arakawa, about paying rent, Miyamoto learned of the incident and thought the name Mario had a nice ring to it and that it would be suitable for his protagonist. As for Mario's iconic look, Miyamoto explained in an interview about his origins during the 8-bit era. Drawing a face was complicated, so I started with a nose. In order to distinguish the nose, I added a mustache. Drawing hair was also complicated, so I made him wear a cap. As Mario's design and personality were fleshed out even more, Miyamoto began to conceive of a game involving Mario and his brother Luigi. In 1983, an arcade game called Mario Brothers was released. It featured the two Italian plumbers exterminating creatures that emerged from pipes by flipping them upside down and kicking them away. While not part of the Super Mario series, it introduced the character of Luigi and included elements such as spinning bonus coins and flipping turtles onto their backs that would be seen in later titles. Fun fact, Miyamoto came up with the name Luigi for the second player after researching the second most popular Italian name. He also liked the fact that Luigi happens to mean similar when translated phonetically in Japanese. It was not until 1985 that Super Mario Bros. hit arcades and home video game consoles. Set in the Mushroom Kingdom, which has fallen into ruin thanks to the black magic of the Koopa tribe, Mario hears of the plight of the Mushroom people. Their princess, Princess Toadstool, is the only one who can return the kingdom to its former glory. But she has been kidnapped by the great Koopa Turtle King, known as Bowser. So, as Mario, you must set out on a quest to free the princess, defeat the Koopa, and save the mushroom people. Princess Toadstool, by the way, is also Princess Peach. Interestingly, she was always known as Princess Peach in Japan, but was introduced as Princess Toadstool in America. The names were eventually combined so that her full name is now officially Princess Peach Toadstool, but most people refer to her simply as Peach. And quite the peach she is, too, I might add. Mario certainly agrees. No pressure. Similarly, Bowser was only known as Koopa in Japan to begin with, but the English name stuck, and the antagonist's official name is now King Bowser Koopa. In addition to Peach and Bowser, the side-scrolling 2D platform game introduced Goombas and Koopa Troopas, as well as key gameplay elements such as the three power-ups. The Super Mushroom increases Mario's size and provides an extra hit point. The Fire Flower allows the player to throw fireballs as weapons, and a Superstar grants Mario temporary invincibility. 
It's from the Super Mushroom specifically that Super Mario Bros. gets its title, as the development team chose it after adding that power-up to the game. The goal of Super Mario Bros. is to reach the end of each level, defeating enemies and collecting power-ups along the way. Then take down Bowser's flag that's risen above the castle. There are eight worlds, each with four zones, and in the fourth zone of each world, the player must fight against Bowser. However, the Bowsers encountered in worlds one to seven are fake, and the real Bowser is only encountered at the end of World 8. Interestingly, for years, Super Mario Bros. fans debated whether or not it was possible to jump over the flagpole at the end of a level. Since the arrival of YouTube, many people have since proven that this is indeed possible, not only on level 3 of World 3, but also in the very first level of the game. Jumping the flagpole causes an endless loop where Mario can just keep on running. Super Mario Bros. was a huge success for Nintendo, both critically and commercially. The title was instrumental in boosting sales of the NES in America and the Famicom in Japan. Having been re-released on multiple platforms in the decades since its release, it is the sixth best-selling game of all time, with over 58 million copies sold. Super Mario Bros. regularly tops review lists that count down the best or most influential games of all time. Mostly, however, it's recognizable as the game that spawned a franchise that has lasted over 35 years and continues to entertain gamers around the world today. Fun fact, did you know that Mario was originally going to be a carpenter? However, after a colleague suggested to Miyamoto that Mario more closely resembled a plumber, he changed his profession and developed Mario Brothers, featuring Mario in the sewers of New York City. Thank you, Super Mario Bros. It seems like the only thing you haven't drained is my bank account. Surprisingly, the first real sequel to Super Mario Bros. was not enjoyed worldwide. It was a Japanese exclusive released in 1986 known as Super Mario Bros. 2. That was until 2007 when it became a downloadable title called Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels for the Wii, Nintendo 3DS, and Wii U. The game was considered by Nintendo of America to be too hard for American audiences and too similar to the original title. Essentially, the story is exactly the same, with Princess Peach kidnapped by Bowser. However, players can play as Luigi, who, for the first time, has his own distinct abilities. He can jump slightly higher than Mario, but also has worse traction, meaning it can feel like he is often walking on ice. A fantasy world can be unlocked if the game is completed as Mario or Luigi without warping. In this ninth world, the player has only one life, and the four levels repeat until that life is lost. There are also four secret worlds lettered from World A to World D, which can be accessed by completing level four on World 8 a total of eight times. Once a player racks up eight stars on this level, they must hold down the A button, and then the second quest begins. The lost levels became remembered as among the most difficult Nintendo games. For gamers outside of Japan, Super Mario Bros. 2, a completely different game, became available to play on the NES in 1988. It was later released under the title of Super Mario USA in Japan in 1992. This follow-up title was greatly different from the original Super Mario Bros., which caused it to come in for criticism by some fans. The game's plot centers around a strange dream, which Mario has involving the people of Subcon, aka the Land of Dreams. They've been cursed and are under the spell of an evil frog named Wart and his minions. As you can guess, it's up to you to save them. Players can choose from one of four playable characters. This time around, Mario, Luigi, Toad, or Princess Toadstool, before entering a mysterious door to save the people of Subcon. Each character has different statistics when it comes to their speed, power, and jumping abilities, making for a different experience depending on who you select. There are seven worlds with fewer levels, but new enemies are introduced, such as Shy Guy and Birdo. The English manual for Super Mario Bros. 2 refers to Birdo as a male, who thinks he is a girl, and would prefer to be called Birdetta. Some interpret that as Birdo being transgender, which would make her the first transgender video game character of all time. Fun fact, Nintendo were in a rush to create a Super Mario Bros. sequel for an international audience, 
So they took an existing game called Yume Kojo, Doki Doki Panic, replaced all the playable characters with Mario characters, and labeled it Super Mario Bros. 2, with a few minor changes. Based on the first and second Super Mario Bros. games, there was also a television series, named the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, which first aired in September 1989. The television series, with a total of 52 episodes, featured both live-action and animated segments. The plot revolves around two plumbers from Brooklyn, New York, named Mario and Luigi, who accidentally warp into the Mushroom Kingdom while fixing a drain in a bathtub. The series was created by Andy Hayward, who spent about a year trying to convince Nintendo to license the characters. Eventually, he was given the green light. And in an interview with USA Today, Hayward said, The Mario Brothers is such a unique property, we had to do it in a different way. We wanted to do a cartoon, but also do a show that extended beyond the cartoon. The character of Mario was brought to life in the show by WWF Hall of Fame wrestler Captain Lou Albano. Meanwhile, the role of Luigi was played by Canadian actor Danny Wells. Each episode would have a live-action segment, followed by an animated story of Super Mario Brothers. Although, strangely, on Fridays, the latter would be replaced by The Legend of Zelda animations. Two main theme songs were used during the show's broadcast, The Plumber Rap and Do the Mario. Neither has aged particularly well. With the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game, we're not like the others who get all the fame. If your sink is in trouble, you can call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked. Although, Do the Mario has been somewhat revived in recent years as a meme and in funny remixes on YouTube. The critical response to the Super Mario Bros. Super Show was mixed, with some admiring its unique take on the franchise and its interesting short animations. However, many people were put off by the live-action segments and the acting of Albano and Wells. Mike Hughes of USA Today said the show relied too heavily on slapstick humor and called it a surprising disappointment. In a retrospective review, Mark Bozon of IGN went even harder, saying the series was the biggest offender among Nintendo's many embarrassing moments. Yikes! Before Super Mario Bros. 3 was released, gameplay appeared in the 1989 movie The Wizard. This was the first time people could see a preview of the new Super Mario Bros. game. And the movie was basically one big commercial. But it sure made Nintendo fans excited for the game that came out a few months later for the NES in 1990. Returning to a more familiar setting, the game takes place in the Mushroom World, where Bowser has returned and sent seven of his children, known as Koopalings, to conquer the Seven Kingdoms, capturing each king's magical wand and turning the kings into animals. Princess Toadstool instructs Mario and Luigi to travel to each kingdom, retrieve the stolen wands, and return each king to normal. But their mission only serves as a distraction for Bowser to once again kidnap the princess. So after saving the kings, Mario and Luigi must travel to the Dark Land, find Castle Koopa, and rescue the princess too. The third entry into the series had complex gameplay and a wealth of new features, including new moves, new items, and a wider variety of enemies. Power-ups now included the Super League, the Tanuki Suit, the Magic Wing, the Frog Suit, the Hammer Suit, and the Goomba's Shoe. There were special areas in each world too, like Toad Houses, where the player can obtain useful items, and Spade Panels, where the player can play a matching minigame for the chance to win some extra lives. There were also secret areas to find, such as the White Mushroom House and the Treasure Ship. While the previous game may have been rushed, Super Mario Bros. 3 was a passion project that took more than two years to complete. Shigeru Miyamoto served as director and encouraged everyone working on the game to share their ideas. Super Mario Bros. 3 was a massive hit among fans and critics. It is widely considered to be one of the best games ever released for the NES with one reviewer referring to it as the Mona Lisa of gaming. While it didn't sell as many copies as the original title, it has sold over 24.4 million copies to date, compared to the original's 58 million. The game remains among many people's favorites. Tim Boone of Computer and Video Games described it as absolutely impossible to put down for anything less than a fire alarm. And even then, 
you find yourself weighing down the odds. Fun fact, the chain chomp enemy was inspired by an incident from Miyamoto's early life, in which a dog lunged at him, but was pulled away before it could bite him. Meanwhile, the Koopalings were designed to be unique in appearance and personality, with Miyamoto basing the characters on seven of his programmers as a way to thank them for their hard work. Nintendo of America also named the Koopalings after well-known musicians, with examples being Ludwig von Koopa and Lemmy Koopa, referencing Ludwig van Beethoven and Lenny Kilmeister of Motorhead, respectively. On September 8, 1990, an animated series titled The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 premiered on NBC in the United States. There were 26 episodes in total, produced by DIC Animation City, with overseas animation completed by South Korean studio Cy Young Animation. Loosely based on the video game, it featured an almost entirely new cast compared to the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, with only John Stalker and Harvey Atkin returning to reprise their roles as Toad and King Koopa, respectively. Walker Boone became the voice of Mario, while Tony Rosato was brought in to voice Luigi. Live action scenes were dropped from the format, and the episodes instead consisted of two animated segments, around 11 minutes each. Animations began with a title card that featured world map footage taken from Super Mario Bros. 3, the game. As for the plot, the opening narration states, It is a legend no one will forget. Everyone thought King Koopa had left the Mushroom Kingdom. And then, his doom ship attacked. King Koopa was back, with the greatest danger ever known, his Koopa Kids. Viewers follow the adventures of Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Princess Toadstool as they attempt to beat back the evil King Koopa and the Koopalings. Enemies and power-ups seen in the video game can also be seen in the TV show. Overall, the series is much more faithful to its source material and establishes a sense of continuity, which the Super Show failed to do. Many episodes are set on Earth, or the real world, as it's called by characters, and take place in various locations, such as Brooklyn, London, Paris, Venice, and elsewhere. One episode in particular, titled Seven Continents for Seven Koopas, is about Koopalings invading each of the world's seven continents. Fittingly, the show itself was aired in many countries around the world and has been translated into Italian, Hungarian, Portuguese, Romanian, Russian, and numerous other languages. It is generally seen as a much better adaptation of the franchise than its predecessor and probably helped to introduce many children around the world to the joy and wonder that is Super Mario Brothers. Creating a professional website doesn't have to be difficult. Squarespace offers powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule posts. Plus, they have amazing extensions that let you manage inventory and promote products. Perfect for anyone that's looking to start a successful business online. If you want to create a website, look no further. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash flatlife to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. After a successful trilogy of games on the NES, Super Mario was ready to enter a new land in 1989 and then a whole new world the year after. Click the video on screen to follow him down that warp hole. And thanks for watching.